We're going to need a bigger railroad. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is Heist. Today we're playing Deer Elk Valley. And if you've seen the last Deer Elk Valley livestream I did, you've been waiting for this. We've got our three DE6s fired up at the head end, and we've got quite the pile behind us. That's right. 78 cars. <laughs> Well, I guess 75 cars after the uh, <clears throat> after the three diesels, if we're going to be really pedantic about it. But we've, we've put together 12 jobs out of the harbor so that we could have a massive train. I finally paid off my debt, so I was finally able to get the MU hoses, and they run through the coupler, which is a little strange. The mod Or above the coupler in this case. But anyways, um, so we've got these things cooking up, and uh, we're going to try and run this thing here. I don't have any of the job booklets on me, and I can't remember on the live stream if I threw them on the ground or if I ex turned them in and accepted them. Did we just say to hell with the bonus? <laughs> yeah, I threw the booklets on the ground, and thankfully they returned back to the spawn here. I'm going to take a second to grab all these and make sure that I have them. <laughs> I had myself confused. It's 11 jobs, not 12. Anyways, we've gotten all those booklets and <laughs> just about cleaned out the, uh, the harbor here. So we're going to accept them in the best we can in the opposite order. I'm going to try and do it so that the uh, the steel mill jobs come last so that we can hopefully get the time bonuses on those. I'm not expecting I'd get any of the other time bonuses, just the steel mill ones. And there's quite a lot of explodey boys in this train. So yeah, <laughs> it feels like it's more explodey than uh, not. So okay, and that's it. It's time to highball. Let's go, let's go, let's go. However, the head of the train's all the way over here. Get in this thing. Kick it in forward. Kick the air off. Oh my goodness, the automatic's been set up. We should have checked that already. That's going to slow us down here as we release this. Unless the air's not cut in. Anyway, start notching it up, see what we can do. We're gonna notch it up nice and slow, nice and easy. We've just got it in two right now. It's gonna be a lot of cars that need to start rolling, so. Oh yeah, the train wasn't charged at all. We can see the reservoir in each, uh, the average reservoir across each job with the uh, the HUD mod there. That's really gonna be instrumental in this. And we throttle it up a little bit and we instantly watch the uh, derail percentage increase. But we got three engines they're all online now they're all pulling and smoking like they're good old Rio Grande engines so nice and authentic we'll charge them up a little faster this way that's awesome that you can see the brake pipe gradient across this we didn't do our uh, initial terminal air test I'm sorry <laughs> breaking all the rules but hey it's the S and D right wait wrong game so normally I would have had to have released the brakes, done a full brake test, check the brakes on every single car, made sure I had the right reduction at the rear end, release it all, and then do that. But um, we've got, you know, we've got freight to move. we got to move it quick. So <laughs> we'll just have to listen to the darn uh, automatic hiss at us for the next eon. Where's the back of the train? Anyone see it? <laughs> oh, lordy. It's a, a bit of a slideshow back there. So, this, um... Oh, we're already doing 40. Okay, that's probably plenty. Three DE6s may have been too much for this. We might only needed the two, which is kind of absurd, but three looks a little bit nicer. It is only 1,317 meters long, or 2,703 metric tons of train behind us. So, oh, even we're getting some spicy noises up here. We're, we're luckily on a hill, so shouldn't make too big of a difference here. It is going to be a bit of a steep climb out of this, though, so I'm surprised that we're still just walking away with it. Oh, there goes the speed. Notching them up. <laughs> All right. Are we not scared? We're not scared. We'll hop out and watch it for a second. Where's the end of the train? Oh my god. All the way over there. There it is. 
And the head ends up here, running away from me. In a scary fashion. Can I get in the cab, please? Luckily, you can notch up and down all of the locomotives from any of the cabs. You don't have to be in the lead. I suppose it'd be smart. I could pair, just in case, I could pair my remote control with the, uh, wherever it is. It's lost in here somewhere. There it is. We could pair the locomotive remote control with the lead engine, just in case. Keep that ready. All right. We're all in the green on the derail counters, so we're going to bump up the speed a little bit. And we're really going to put this uh, HUD to the use here so that the last cars in the in the train are going to the steel mill B3 inbound. And the B yard is the yard that you run through on the main. But then the next cut is going to be in the A yard, so we're going to have to shove those back in. So we're going to have to shove this whole train. We, we might make the time bonus on the... Uh, the last set of cars, we'll, we'll line the switch, run through the B3i, and we'll just drop them on the fly. But those A6 cars, we might have to, um, shoving back is going to be a bit much. And it looks like our, yeah, our brake pipe is equalized all the way across finally. We have five bar all the way down, and all of our reservoirs are at five. So we're finally ready to actually take some sets if we needed to. But we're running upgrade for the first bit here. He says, going around a sharp curve that's rated for 40 while doing, like, 50. It's fine. <laughs> this is awesome. And and having the three locomotives like this, it just looks properly brilliant with the Rio Grande scheme on them. It feels like we're pulling some, you know, tunnel motors pulling a bunch of freight up Tennessee Pass. This is like Foamer Dreams right here, man. Look at that! Oh, we've also got a coupler uh, gauge there to see how, how much slack I'm putting on. Oh, we can't quite go to eight still, even with this much tonnage behind us. We can't go to eight without wheel slip. And these primitive DE6s don't have wheel slip relays, apparently, that uh, handle what to do with the load in the sand. Oh, well. A lot of the uh, later EMD power, and by later I mean in like the 80s. <laughs> The 1980s for Leighton Moreland. Um, they ended up getting a wheel slip relay that would automatically dump sand if it detected a wheel slip. But apparently these don't have it, so that's okay. More interaction for uh, better train handling. Give you something else to do as the engineer. But I'm really surprised at how easy these three DE6s are taking this. I guess it would have been a little over tonnage for two, but not quite tonnage for three, so that makes sense. And somewhere back, many, many cars behind us. But the end of the train is not happy with what's going on back there. We're trying to take it about 50 around that curve. <laughs> the spicy number is getting spicier. We'll just, uh, you know, we'll just ease it back down here. And yeah, we got a, that sharp switch coming up. So I'll, we'll just let it idle now and see what it does. And we are lined, yeah, lined to steel mill B by the look of it, 220 meters. That HUD is really helpful. Uh, it was so funny. I played this game with the HUD installed, and I just thought it was kind of clunky and in the way, and then people would, you know, I didn't bother to read through it, and people were like, you do realize you can look at all that stuff on the, the heads-up display you installed, right? It's like, oh, no, that's helpful. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So we got a 70 coming up in a little bit, but pretty much with the way that this train is this long, with this many cars behind us, being over a kilometer long, the DRL Valley speed limits change uh, more frequently than most humans change their underpants. So, um, <laughs> yeah, once every 100 feet. Anyone beat that? No? Only if you're having a really bad day. <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah, no, the Daryl Valley speed limits change, I mean, shoot, every 100 meters sometimes. So we could be in a 70 while we're in a 40, while we're in a 30, while we're in a 120. And uh, we kind of have to go with whatever the weakest link is. Let's see. We're going to start slipping. No. So we're going to kind of, 40 seems to be pretty happy to try and keep things at overall. 
So yeah, you can start to see some of the train, about, you know, 50 cars back-ish is starting to get a little spicy on screen there. And we're cresting over almost to 50 now, so I think we'll do that here. Although, what do we think, viewers? That's the station map. World map. Okay, after this next left-hand, right-hand turn, we do have some of the, uh, the broadest turns in the game, but... And fastest running railroad. But, uh, yeah, for now... The rear of our train's going through that awful junction that I hate back there, so... We'll, uh, we'll just keep it about here. And pray that nothing starts to go bang behind us. <laughs> they ought to put a furnace in here that you need to shovel into. Give you something else to do as, as the uh, guy in the cab. That's a novel idea, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> And, and yes, I'm uh, sorry about the patched unit on the head of the uh, the train here, but there's only three road numbers for the, the rear grand skin, and I didn't want to have a duplicate road number, so we had to have the 7400, which is a UP patched locomotive, because the Union Pacific ended up buying the rear grand. Or I always get that history wrong. T the DNRGW, the rear grand is what it was called. Oh, and we're really scooting now, but it seems to be okay, so whatever. We'll keep on scooting then. Um, the Southern Pacific and the Denver and Rio Grande Western had a merger of some flavor at some point, and I can never remember who bought who in the uh, the mid '90s, and then the uh, or maybe it was the late '80s, and then UP bought them both in the mid '90s, I think. And that's what made Union Pacific as big as it is. Still not as big as my alma mater, BNSF, but you know, no one can be perfect. We're doing a good 70 here, which means we are going to have to go, oh crap, and slow down eventually here. But we'll, we'll push the envelope a little bit while we got fast track ahead of us here. And we'll just whiplash the explosive cars around the back of the thing. It's nothing too scary at the rear of the train, right? It's only hazmat level 2 or something. <laughs> this, this is cooking, folks. <laughs> going 80 kilometers an hour now. 64. If, if that number starts to get into the 70s, we might have an issue. So I think we'll back the power off there. We're doing about 80. As soon as we go, pretty much once we get onto this left-hand turn, we're going to need to not plug it, but we're going to want to take a pretty sizable set, get this thing pinched down to about 40. Here we go. Take a minimum application, get it rolling. And now we'll bite into it a little harder here. Okay, we're still going a little quick on the head end, but that satisfied the rest of the train pretty good. And that's giving us a good fair bit of reduction now. Look at that. What do we have? The HUD says that the brake pipe's about four, so we've taken about a one bar set, which is a good 15 pound set on the train. So we'll kick that off and we'll start to pull through it now so we don't lose all of our speed. But it'll give us some ch uh, some time to recharge. And we can keep things scooting along about 40, 50, which is kind of happy. Because I I remember in one of my first episodes of playing DRL Valley for you guys, I ended up derailing the tender of the steam engine on this switch, going only like 55 or 60. So it was either this switch or the next one. So we'll just take it gently through here. Yeah, diverging leg of a switch that sharp, that fast is a little much. Plus, we don't want to get cooking too quick, because we do have that grade coming down to the sawmill coming up next. This is like the, the line in Deer Valley that I know, like the back of my hand. Not really, but kind of. <laughs> I don't think I've run enough on any of the railroad in Deer Valley to truly be qualified by it. There's a, quite the qualification procedure to be allowed to run by yourself on a lot of this stuff. At least in the real thing. Alright, we're going to take a cute minimum application here as the grade starts to work on. And we're gonna just grab a little bit more. Okay, that seems to be doing about what I want it to. Coming through here nice and quick. Okay, so when we're dumping off the rear set of cars in the B3 inbound. Okay, let me get a little bit more air underneath this thing. I guess we could, oh man, we could try and comms radio that switch. We could line ourselves that way. 
can't be that hard, right? I I have this instinct to want to run out ahead and and go line that switch, but I think uh, I think we'll try it from the cab. That'll be interesting. <laughs> We're holding it about 50 kilometers an hour downhill here, running through this cut. So, kind of happy here. Brake pipes down four, four bar. Train brake position 22%. These are nifty things to have. Okay. Yeah, it's just holding speed nice and easy. So this is a really good set. And the, the air brake mod, I don't know if I've talked about it much. Uh, the air brake mod that Zybok made also has the automatic setup to be self-lapping in the diesel so it acts like 26L versus uh, the non-self-lap in the steam engine like we've played with in a couple other playthroughs. Now more of the trains on the grade so we started to speed up a little bit so I'm taking a little bit more of a set here and we're lined towards the steel mill and it looks like we're lined through uh, a different steel mill track so that'll be a little interesting. We want to approach this with a little bit of little bit of caution here. I'm going to let it release so I can recharge the train. Make sure that I've got uh, enough things to go when we get there. And we'll let it work a little bit. Put it about one notch one, notch two. Maybe just notch one. Goodness, that came up quick. Maybe, maybe, no, we'll, let, we'll just let it roll. Never mind. Okay. I don't know which side B3 is on, so I'm going to live with my instinct here. Um... B4, B3, so we are aligned, right, right, left, that's wrong, and now left here. Okay, so we're aligned into the B3I. We're hopefully not hauling total butts here. Oh, well, we're going a good 40. Take a nice big meaty set there, because I'm scared, because I'm very scared. That's fast to be going down the yard ladder. Is there air? You don't know. Okay, okay. We may have fanned the automatic a little too much there. Okay, but we still have good brake pipe. I don't have any application. Oh, we hadn't set anything up yet. I didn't let him recharge enough that we actually didn't start setting. So I had to grab more air. That's a problem. Anyways, kick that off, get us going nice and slow, and now we'll release it and let it ride. And we'll just about stop the train, I think, because we panicked. <laughs> yeah, pull through it, would you, sweetheart? Come on. Nothing's in the dirt, is it? How far back is the, the bit of... Oh. How, how far back is the bit of train that actually needs to get into the hole here? Oh my goodness. Um, very far back. I should have brought a caboose. Yeah, how far back is it? This far back. Does my locomotive... Oop, that's a console. Does my locomotive remote work from here? No, it doesn't. Not even close. Get that slowed down a little bit there. So I guess what the, the, the trick will be is we'll use the remote and we'll get about as far away. I should have paired it to the rear locomotive. Maybe we don't want to be that far. Maybe we want to be far enough that we can see what's going on. Yeah, the rear of the train's still on the hill there. And there's another hill coming up, so we'll take a, take a little set on the train now that hopefully things have recharged. Oh, and it shows the mode of what's going on in each car. That is properly nifty. Cheers, Zybok, once again. Seems like that's pinching it down pretty decently. <laughs> this is so much train to deal with in this video game. This is... I am so nervous with this. <laughs> okay, well, that's... Um, I guess we'll leave about that much train brake on and then we'll just run back here and see what happens. I guess worst case I can dump it. Um, does it say which consist I'm on? Or how do I know which car, what kind of cars I'm on? 
Uh, okay, so it's the last 78 through 69. 78, 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70, 69? Doesn't say which job it is. Oh, hang on. It gives me a, a green... Or no, it doesn't. That's the wrong job. Whatever. Let's dump that, shall we? Please. Dump it. Dump the air. Dump the air. Brakes! Oh, I've got the, the trains in compression ahead of it. It's not going to want to stop. We'll just vent that. Or did it finally pop? One through nine. Okay, what, what do we have back here? Oh no, we left the last car behind! Christ. Okay, well we screwed that up. And we're moving quick now. Alright, we're going to dump everything. Okay. Now that we've royally binned that, and now we have to shove up this grade from this far away. Oh, Christ. Okay, well, this is not going well. Hi, Choo Choo. How are you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Something's happened to the brake pipe. Sorry, I did that. Alright, let's see if we can shove... We still got a fair amount of brake force on some of these back there. It's gonna take him a minute to recharge. Did I leave that angle cock open? I might have left that angle cock open. It's not going hank at me, but whatever. Let's go see. We are so not making this time bonus. We are so not making this time bonus. It's just not gonna happen. Yeah, close the angle cock, you ding dong. Come on. Right. Okay. So we'll knuckle into this. It's too far to just kick it. And I don't think I'd want to try kicking with this much train. As much as Patrick Starr would want me to. We could just... We could just... We could. We could. That's an option. What, what is this? Now the brake cylinder's on on this. So we'd have to knuckle into it and recharge it, I think. Unless I could bleed it all the way. I don't think there's a way. Zybok, make it so that you could bleed air reservoirs on cars. Brake cylinders. I probably need to give this thing a little bit more guts now. Yeah, just shove up this. Sure. This is why we needed three DE6s, because my own incompetence. Come on. Let's go. Nothing's holding you back. No, Literally no brakes are holding you back right now. Alright, that's probably pretty good speed here. And we'll just assume... We'll see. Okay, the HUD updated. We've got another car, and now it's beeping at me because the brake pipe's not hooked up. And we'll shove back until we see that it says green on the uh, on the thing. Although we will, we will just let this go, right? Because it'll it'll highlight SMB B three I as green when we're on the track. That's probably not a good strategy. That's probably a really bad strategy. We should probably be going slow for this because we're coupling hazmat to hazmat, shoving a kilometer long train blind. Who says we follow the rules here, people? <laughs> I'm assuming that, that we could do that. And I'm assuming that it also showed me what kind of cars I was standing on somewhere and I was just too panicked to notice which where it said that. Gotta be getting close, right? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Anyone know where the rear of the train is? <laughs> I really should have brought a caboose and just stashed it somewhere in the middle. It would have been extra switching. Okay, we're on it. We're on it. Dumping it. And then we will just do that. And then we'll set up the independent. And now we'll go turn in this job. Can we get the one bonus? Oh goodness, did we knuckle all the way into the other kind of cars? Well, hopefully nothing exploded. Cool. Let's do this. Let's do the thing. Uh, where's that job? Is the FH-55? It is. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. We're not getting the other bonus, but we got that one bonus. <laughs> Check it out. Okay, we no longer knuckled in. Now we need to go line this mess for the, <laughs> the A yard. 
as the whole train is attempting to release by the sound of it up here. Okay. It's working on it. We'll just let this roll. Get it rolling a little bit. We'll run back. We'll line switches. And then if it gets rolling too fast, we'll just come and tap an angle cock. Because that's proven to be a safe strategy for railroading, right? Oh, it... <laughs> How very convenient. It unrendered the other cars we just delivered. That's how far we had to go, everyone. Okay, where are we going with this? The A6I? That's going to be over here. A6I. Goodness, okay. So we back in until we hit the buffer at ludicrous speed, right? Okay, line to the right, line to the right... That's lined to the left. Um, we need to get up into the cab and start doing some amount of braking, probably. I have a remote, but this makes it more entertaining, right? We'll just give it a quick tap, get a minimum reduction going. That wasn't a minimum reduction. There we go, get everyone into service. Okay, if I set my reverser, can I see where the, uh, oh, I can see what, what locomotives on, or what cars on what switch. See, it says the 476 is uh, at the switch now, 1120 meters behind me. So we'll release the air. We'll let it start to recharge. <laughs> this HUD is really cheating. <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. Um, but I have to have the reverser set reverse to get the HUD in the reverse direction. So now it doesn't say anything's on there, so I think that means we need to stop. So we'll get the train going a little bit, get the independent going a bunch, kick the train off, and that's not doing anything that we want it to, so we'll start throttling it up in reverse. And we'll play the accordion with the explosive train of over a kilometer longness. <laughs> Oh yeah, God, we're way past the switch. And we'll line this switch. And so now when we see the green indication, we'll be able to roll this back with all but the last four cars. And actually what I could do... Oh God, we are playing the train accordion right now. That's not good. What we'll do is we'll bottle the air on the train. We'll leave this ready. And we'll unlock the coupler. So we're shoving... And as soon as we lose speed on this end, it'll kick. Like that. Which is bad, because the train is currently doing stupid things. Can, can I get... <laughs> does the remote work from here? Of course it doesn't. What do you mean you can't control an RCL from a kilometer away? Come on. You wanna... You wanna... Oh, the independent's full on. Well, that's why, ding dong. That's probably a dangerous amount of throttle to leave on this. But who cares? It's just hazmat. <laughs> I don't want the pixels to get harmed. All right, let's see. We'll unlock the coupler. Wait, unlock the... We don't want to ready to the coupler. We want it to be unlocked. We'll unlock both of them. Oh, that's not what I want it to do. Maybe we'll leave the one... <laughs> Oh, but I need my air to be hooked up. And that this is difficult to do on the fly underneath things when the, this other hose is doing things and running me over. Okay, but that looked like we were going a lot faster than we were, and that was a little scary. Okay, so we leave that. We pop that. Ready the coupler. We're going fast. I'm scared. You're scared. We're all scared for ice scared. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh my god. There, why is this so much train? Who said I could do this? Okay. We don't want to shove off all the way because it'll dump those cars that are behind us all the way, right? Oh, for, they're in emergency. They've already dumped. Okay. Well, we'll just shove through them. We got three diesels. And if it suddenly says that uh, the A6I is green, we may have some spooky things happen from up here. I'd like us to slow down a smidge. 
Okay. So we'll keep shoving. A nice 10. Oh, okay. It, it, we're yellow. We're almost there. Okay. We're easing on. Easing on four cars. <laughs> Fan the automatic some more heist. Why don't you? You don't need any main res pressure. I should have brought the caboose for nothing other than turning in the jobs by the locomotives. Okay, we're there. Set them up. Set up the independent. Kick this off. Um, you know what? We'll, we'll just leave the air released and we'll just let this start to go. Well, that was a lot of coupler meters going all of a sudden. I didn't like what I was doing. Anyway. Let's teleport up to the front here. Oh, did we hit the buffer? Oh, why, why did we re... Did we recouple these? No! Why did you couple back in? You were unlocked! You stupid thing! Dang it! Now we gotta run the head end again and re into these from a kilometer away again! Oh, the... Well, yeah, we're definitely not getting this air button. Where did the train go? Teleports. It doesn't matter. Get in the cab. Get in the cab. Set up some air. Set up some air. Put it in reverse. Come on. Let's see if we can slingshot this thing. I guess it wouldn't have told us if we were on that track if there was a, um... If we were knuckled in, would it have? If we weren't knuckled in when we were shoving that way. Oh, so there's no way to tell from up here is, is what I'm learning. Suddenly we'll see a lot of coupler force and it means that we're shoving up against a buffer through a mile of train. Sorry, miles easier to say than kilometer. Through a click of train. That looks maybe vaguely right. Let's set up a huge chunk of independent and see where the hell the train is back here. And it'll be all exploded and all over hell and back. Oh, actually surprisingly not that bad. That might actually work. Wait, we hadn't even contact, whatever. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Let's try and turn in the job. Where's the station? Which way is the stage? Hello, Cleveland. Hey, that was only eight minutes of sadness. All right, now now we can highball. Now we can highball to Cleveland. We'll go help Nigel Tufnell and the boys in Spinal Tap play on stage. <laughs> okay, highball. Now that this uh, shenanigan is over, do we have air? We have air. Now we don't have air. We have throttle. We're doing a burnout. It's good. Come on. Or what are we pulling through? Nothing. Couplers are very angry. It's fine. They'll survive. Train handling. What is it? I'm gonna have to write a polka and find someone to play accordion for me for every time I have stupid train handling like this. Come on, I've got a need. A need for speed. Run eight downhill, because that's smart. Where are we even going next? Who knows? Station map? No, that's not. That's right. Next, we got to go to the goods factory, and that's going to be a, a pain of switching. So we got two cuts to drop off in the D yard. Three cuts to drop off in the D yard. Two on the same track at the rear. That's going to be a little interesting. And the the goods factory is the GF one, the gluten free one. Tee And so D, yeah, we have to shove back into D. So we'll hopefully be able to fit in the reverse loop at the goods factory and uh, be able to shove back into the D tracks. I, I have an anticipation that we may not fit in that reverse loop and it may be a huge opportunity for us to just streamline the train, but you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. This is one of the other fast high flying parts of the map. I know I said earlier that the bit down here that we were running on earlier is pretty fast. I think the fastest chunk is the chunk between City Southwest and the machine factory in town. Other than that spicy junction that'll kill you, because why'd they just put that kink in it? Anyway, civil engineers, man, you can't trust them for anything. But this this chunk right here is pretty quick too, so we'll get it. 
Try and make up some amount of time. I have no idea what the uh, what's the time bonus on these. Twenty nine minutes. Yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> we already we already passed twenty nine minutes for that steel mill job. Okay, so maybe we don't need to go just absolutely full full tilt, but you know, we might as well try and satisfy our customers because no other railroad's doing it these days. We might as well give it a shot. I don't know this chunk of the line that much better. I think it's a little bit slower once we get up this curve here. So we're gonna take a cute little minimum application here and we can see that the cars go to S which I believe is... is that application? Is it set? And what, what's L? Limited set? I'm gonna need to do some reading. All to know is some amount of slowing down is in fact happening. And I would like a smidge more by the look of it. So we'll give it a little more and then we'll kick it off. And now they're all gonna go to release. Okay, so we could probably run around this at about 60. That's a little terrifying of a curve to run around at 60, but it looks like it's a 60. Seems to be so, okay. So we're coming up, we're gonna make a left, then we got the Y to go into the goods factory and we're gonna have to line that up. This is pretty flat railroad. I think I'm gonna let it coast and I'm gonna go take care of that. Just cause I'm scared by the switch remote, you know? And I also kinda wanted to see what the speed is. 50, okay. I don't know if we'll try to do it at 50. There is this pretty steep hill up ahead here but we've just lost a bunch of our tonnage. And fancy to meet you here, train. How's it going? That's not sentient whistle, that's me blowing the horn. Yeah, we'll take a cute little set. Yeah, we're at, now that we've left the steel mill, we're at just over a kilometer long, still 2,213 tons. We got that 50, I guess I, I needed to go see what the speed board is. You've got a HUD, you were just talking about how you learned how to use it, ding dong. Anyway, I'll, I'll listen to myself one of these days. <laughs> All right, we took another little minimum reduction and then kicked it off. The speedo's all over the place. It's fine. And then uh, I guess we'll we'll deal with the switch remote as we come in. Just slap the automatic around. That's how that works. I think it's accordion forces in my train. The Polk is trying to invade, and that's what's causing my speed to vary so much. That's a little scary through there. Let's uh, let's take a nice set that'll actually slow down the train and it'll let it propagate. And then we'll start pulling through it, just about notch one for now. Yeah, no, notch one's fine. Okay. Notch two wanted to go to the races. That's a big mountain up there. Does anyone remember playing Deer Old Valley, like, right when it came out and all the foliage was not near this nice, the scenery was nowhere near this good? Well, I mean, full, the MOW needs to come and clean that up, but, you know, other than that, it's fine. Unfortunately, I can't have Clown and, and Pharma and Tristan and everyone come and clean up, uh, oh, and Mickley, sorry, I know you're going to be mad that I didn't say your name. Uh, <laughs> I can't have them come and clean up my track in this game, huh? It's not even my track. Whose track is it? Who is Derail Valley? Why do they have these American European trains of much confusedness? Anyways, we're entering yard limits. We're gonna go through this bizarrely. Uh, <laughs> so what is the word I'm looking for? Elliptical tunnel portal. And we'll ease it down to a little bit less speed here. Because we're gonna have to be ready with our comms radio for switches. I have no idea where we're lined to because I have not been to the goods factory in the hottest of hot minutes. Lined both to the right. Running through the A1. There's passenger cars up in the station up ahead. That's always fun. We'll still, uh, hopefully I'll have enough money for the passenger license after I do this. So if you guys like to see some passenger jobs, let me know in the comments. That hill's really eating the rest of the train there. We're notching up. I think that is the lead switch for the runaround. Or the reverse loop, so we'll throw that. And then uh, 
we'll pull into the reverse loop, which I think is about a 20, so we'll probably not go terribly much faster than this and see what it does. And we got Crossing Alley through here, apparently. horn makes me giggle every time. Can we fit a kilometer of train in there? That's the question. Let's just let this idle. Let's hopefully it doesn't stop. This is a sharp switch here. We'll come around that. Got more grade crossings, reverse loop, and it comes back pretty much on the same track we're coming in on. I think I'm going to line myself through to this other station platform though because it'll give us a little bit of extra room just in case we don't fit so that like the, the fouling point will be back here so that'll give us plenty of space to to work ahead with the diesel here i guess we can run from the remote now too can't we so we're all going to be kind of pretty much in here so we can keep it notched up a little bit as we watch the rest of the train come in climb on top of the the goods factory itself here I want to keep it at about a good 15, 20 kilometer an hour. <laughs> I wonder if I, I probably needed to throw that switch. So we're coming up, going to be coming up right there. There we are in the trees. How long is the train? Yes. And the end's still not there. I think this is the, the logistical hall job. So this is the first of the goods factory jobs right here, I think, with these flat cars. So in other words, I don't think we would have fit in this reverse loop at all had it not had the um, the extra passing track there. Yeah. Oh my god. It just keeps on coming. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and we're just running the freight through the platform. It's fine. We started this grade crossing morning sequence way too early. We'll just leave it there and we'll disobey the rules. Yeah, goodness, here comes the end of it now. It's not terribly often you can wave at the, the back of your train from the front of your train or from the back of your train to the front, particularly not in Derail Valley. <laughs> That's just fun. How long is the train? Yes. The front and the end. <laughs> All right, well now we'll, we'll run from the, the remote. And so we got the rear cut of cars. The rear couple cuts of cars gotta go to the same track in the D yard here. They both gotta go to the D6 inbound and the D yard is in here. Look, we got some more DE, <laughs> DE6s we could add. Well, anyway, we're almost to where we want. Oh, but we are out of range of our locomotive, just barely there. That's unfortunate. I was hoping we wouldn't have that problem. Should have brought a caboose. Moral of the episode. Should have brought a caboose. <laughs> Alright, did we set that up in time to make the switch? That's disappointing. <laughs> Should have brought a caboose. <laughs> the story of this episode for sure. Come on, we just need like a car length out of you, bud. Oh, right. The wheel slip beep beep. Come on. Keep it going. Keep it going. Give me about a car. There we go. And now we'll spank. Spank the train. There we go. Release the train and set up the independent. Those diesels are probably on the hill. Oh, and it's accordioned back. <laughs> The train is punishing me for my hubris. <laughs> How much slack is there? Enough that you can't have the train handling that we're doing here. That's kind of hilarious. Okay, well, how about we take him ahead, another car, and this time not accordion the hell out of it, shall we? Take a little set on the train, take a big set on the independent, and then release the train. So we know it's got all the way set, so now we sprint over there Throw the switch before it can accordion back across it, and the accordioning train murders some poor unsuspecting 
human at this grade crossing. <laughs> he didn't protect your shove. I wasn't shoving. <laughs> not, not technically. Oh, but the nice thing is now we can run from over here and we can spot ourselves. Okay, this track is a lot longer than I thought. Where's our head end? It sounds like it's over here. Is it poking out the tunnel? Just poking out the tunnel. There you go. Head end poking out the tunnel and the rear end is entering the yard. Did I line those switches? I really should have kicked these. There's still time. I've still got time. I bet you it's just this, this change in train cars right here. Bottle the air. Do the thing. Dunk, right? Yeah, we got both of the jobs here. And we'll get ready on the we'll get ready on the air brake here. Cute little sets. Give it to me. No. Give the cute little sets were not very cute. Okay, well, toxic and corrosive. Ramming speed. Did I leave that angle cock open again? Oh, cool. Ramming speed again. And where's that next cut of cars need to go? The D1S? Oh, there's stuff in D1S. That's not going to be fun. All right, we just got to line that one switch. Yeah, that would have been really great had it worked out. I was getting too nervous. I was on the wrong... I should have braked from the other end so I could have seen how far they away they were. But yeah, we, we had plenty of space still. narrow gauge railroader dealing with more than 10 cars gets a little antsy okay <laughs> all right well, let's not level this thing shall we 10 now that's pretty quick slam on the independent brake and dunk okay shove it shove us back in till we're in the clear here until the game says we're in the clear, not until we're actually in the clear. Do we... Do we break a... Why is the whole train breaking? Oh. It's not the whole train, it's this whole train. It lists out by car, because... Reasons. Gotcha. So it doesn't want to shove through these. Okay, we'll hook in the air like nerds. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god. We didn't lace the knuckle back up again. Right. This is going spectacularly well. Come on. I don't care if you're shoving through a bunch of train cars in emergency. Now you slip? Come on. Give it a dunk. And now shove through it. Come on. You've got like a car length to go. Your 3DE6s. Who cares that you're shoving a kilometer of train and some of it's an emergency? Come on. Next, they're going to tell me they want to raise the locomotives. Okay, we'll hook the air in again. And we'll be cognizant of our stupidity that the that the knuckles are <laughs> very much bypassed. <laughs> there we go. Things are now releasing. Oh, that whole thing went into emergency too when we hooked the air in on these. That's helpful. I guess I should ride from one of the tank cars to know that it's safely in the track. And it is. Slam on the brakes. Slam on the brakes. There we go. And now we'll go turn the jobs in. Where's the station? Where's the stage? There it is. Hello, Cleveland. I guess we're not racing to do a... Uh, um, yeah, we're not racing for the bonus by any means here, but it is nice to remove some of the clutter. This is a freight haul. So that's that one. Yep. Cool. 36 grand there. And then the LH. So this this is the big long one that we now got to go stab into the, uh, the one. Oh, we forgot to close that angle cock. Should have closed that first. Whatever. Put it in forward. Put it in eight. Let's go. Oh, 
<laughs> Where is our power? There it is. <laughs> the train's only 825 meters long now, so. But it did get significantly less explodey, which is kind of unfortunate. That's that's the favorite part. I order my trains picante. So it's going to the D1S that it really does not look like there's enough room for this. We're going to have to shove those tankers way out the back. Are they spicy? They don't look too spicy. They don't have any, uh, they don't say hot on them. So those are empties. We'll just try not to ram them too disgustingly hard. Took a little set on the train. Take a little bit more of a set on the train. Flip the switch. Kick the independent on, release the train. Watch as it springs back at me once again, because this is not the proper amount of train handling for when I'm dealing with this many cars. You gotta be a lot more careful and considered and making slow actions than that, but um, it's a video game and I'd like to get paid, so we'll do it the way I want. <laughs> that, that and the, the amount of abuse this train has seemed to have taken is kind of surprising. Anyways. Ramming speed! Maybe not ramming speed, but you know. Aggressive coupling speed! <laughs> I imagine the bit of programming that they had to do to figure out where the jobs spawn and what jobs can do what and run where to where, I bet that is a total pain for the Dral Valley people. That's gotta be, it's gotta be really frustrating, I'd think. Without making every track a for sure dedicated inbound or outbound or whatever. I guess that's why they have the logistical halls and the other kinds of jobs. Let's take a way late set on the train break here. Release it, and then just pray. Bunk. All right, now throttle through that. Then whatever happens, happens back there. We're now knuckled into something else that's going to the OWNB2S. I'm not sure what the OWN is off the top of my head. Oil Wall North? Yeah. Okay, set it up a little bit. Pop the thing. Do the thing. Let that recover this time. Put the train in forward. Give it some gas. It's already going downhill, it's fine. We can give it that much speed. We can turn in the job before that. Oh, it's not already going downhill, it's in the station. The train's gotten considerably shorter. Well, maybe we shouldn't leave it unattended for that long then. Logistical haul, boom! Yay, $12,000. All right, let's hop in. It's time to go, boys. Off to our last destination. All right, we're only 620 meters long, 1388 tons. We really only need probably one of these DE6s at this point. Maybe uh, maybe two, if you really wanted it, but get up to a good pace here. Blow the, uh, the horn for the crossing in the station platform, which is just much to the joy to all the passengers waiting for the train. My air is still recovering. Yeah, air is still, we haven't quite recharged all the way back. There we go. Fun fact, I actually had a, a silly moment at, uh, at my real job with uh, the horns being blown midway through the platform that we had to figure out how to solve. PTC was automatically trying to blow the horn for the, the crossing at the, uh, the opposite side of the platform, near side crossing. And uh, yeah. You get a lot of passenger complaints when the train horn sounds directly in front of their face when their train is stopping for them, not running through the crossing. One of those weird edge cases that you gotta f learn to deal with. <laughs> All right, let's see about throttling this thing up a little bit. We're gonna have to make sure we throw the switch at the Y, obviously, because we're now continuing on to the right towards the food factory, now that we've been to the goods factory. Food factory is not too far away, but it is some of these spicier curves that we're going to see today. But we no longer have two thirds of the train we <laughs> we left with, pretty much. So, and thankfully, uh, three of these jobs are going to the same track when we get to the food factory. So it shouldn't be the worst switching in the world. 
And I'm not sure why we're still hearing air brake hiss. Not sure what's going on there. I wonder if, is the remote trying to do something stupid? Not sure what's going on there. Anyway, we can just listen to it. Doesn't seem to be slowing us down, so. Although that can technically be quite the problem sometimes. Because we've got a 50 coming up and we are going down a bit of a grade, so we will take a, a good sized set there. Let it release pretty quick. That's not what I want. I want the other remote. I guess they call it a radio and not a remote. But coming up to a Y. Which is also the sign they use for yard limits. Because it works in both cases. Despite the word Y starting with the letter W. Because the English language is a dumb thing. I guess my main res isn't charged up all the way. Which is my, maybe what that's trying to tell me. Set up a little air there, let it release, and we are scooting down the way. I have no idea if I'm aligned at Oil Well North. I think I should be. I think last time I came through here, I was coming from the coal mine with those steam trains. So, and those points being lined that way would lead me to believe that, and we're not lined in there. Those are quite close together. So we'll get this thing under power here. See if we can't charge our main res back up. Oh, that's got to be this guy. The red needle's not near at four yet. Gotcha. Well, I can't throttle it up too much harder to recharge. Yeah, that sounds about right. God. Uh, uh, so Zybok mentioned this to me. This is what I messed up on the live stream, and I didn't realize once again that his simulation no knows knows no bounds. Um, these locomotives that. The DE6s, they're EMD locomotives with a uh, air compressor that's attached directly to the engine via uh, shaft off the crankshaft. And so they're mechanically driven. So the faster you run the engine, the faster they make air. And I've met a couple locomotives that really did not want to make air at all. And you really had to notch them up into like notch five, notch six to get them to really make any air. But unfortunately, right now we can't really do that until uh, we got something that resists us. Luckily, we've got a hill coming up, but... Yeah, you can see the main res is supposed to be at four bar, and it's only at about three. But we got a little bit more room for speed by the look of it, so... We'll just let it roll. We do have a 30 coming up in a click and a half, but... And we're lined into the food factory A. So let's kind of figure out what we're going to do when we get there. Goods factory. And now we're going to the fufa, the food factory. Nope, scroll the other way through the manual. Okay, so food factory, we're dropping off in C and D yards. C yards first. So we're going to run through C, then back into D. Okay. So we got C, C4 on the very back and C6 in the middle. I kind of wish we had the C4 on the front. I kind of put that in the wrong way, despite talking about how well I was setting up this train. I guess we could Dutch drop the C, the last cars into into the four. That'll be annoying to figure out with this many cars. It's only a five car consist. Okay, so we'll Dutch drop the C4 cars. We'll run into C6 with our train, cut those cars. We'll also drop those and then back in with the cars for the D yard. And that should, uh, knock on wood, be a thing that works. That res does just did not want to come back up. Well, now it says it's got eight on the HUD, but... Oh, hang on. The third engine doesn't... Oh, the third engine's dead. The third engine's out of fuel. <laughs> well, it shouldn't be stopping its main reservoir. Come on. How close... Oh, we're getting bingo on fuel. This is, uh, I, I didn't even consider that. I've not run enough to do that. And we've got that 30 kilometer an hour coming right up. Okay, dump the air, dump the air, dump the air, dump the air. Got it. Now bring out the throttle wide open while we release it. Just play that accordion. Boom. It's a dance fest. That's why we brought three locomotives, right? So when they run out of fuel, it doesn't matter. 
eh, I'm out of fuel. Well, you know, it's not like it's the worst thing in the world to run a diesel engine out of fuel or anything. Side note, it, it's actually really bad to run diesels out of fuel. I can't recall the exact reasoning why, but it's something like you have to replace all the filters and reprime the system and stuff. You can't just like fill it back up like you can your car. So we gotta be somewhat careful with that. I should probably shut down one of these um, and just run with the one. Sharp curves through here. Spicy track. We even said it was sharp curves. Yeah, I think I'm going to shut down my second unit just in case. We're getting close, but there's no harm in doing that. Pulling the knife switch. Why are we going fast? Those derail numbers are getting spicy back there. Chill. <laughs> we must be going downhill and I didn't realize it. Because we're dealing with fuel problems, which was something that I was not expecting in today's episode. I should have known that we would use a lot of fuel doing this. This is still spicy track. Let me just fan this thing until it makes something apply. Please. 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 Thank you. <laughs> the train handling's gone out the window, folks. It's okay, people have been telling me on the videos that trains with buffers and typically uh, to ball and chain or ball and screwball, what are they called? Buffer and hook couplers, buffer and chain couplers are, um, you know, you don't need to have train handling with those, right? We're still pulling 36 cars, which is longer than any car train ever pulled by anything that ran in the UK. I don't know that, I'm just giving them crap. <laughs> okay, that's right. We come around a real sharp corner here. So we'll get a nice set going. If we're going to Dutch drop those last five cars, one, two, three, four, five, six, six cars, 31 through 36, inclusive. What? Okay. <laughs> Let's just... Let's just put that in emergency for a second. What is going on here? Oh, heavens, no. Game, why, why did, why, what? What? Um, so I had done a, a test episode the first time I tried the steamer overhaul, I tried to pull it out of here and it didn't work and I got frustrated and so I exited out and I haven't run back here since. And um, I guess this whole mess is just in the way. And what? I don't know why these haven't despawned. Why? Hopefully that doesn't make them blow up. That'd be hilarious if it did. Oh, it does make me actually drop my lighter, though. I need that. Thanks. Okay. What am I going to do when they start playing Freebird? That sort of helped. Once that's a lot more expensive to rear rail. That's cheaper, but... It's about the same as... Oh, oh, oh! We're flirting with disaster here. <laughs> this was the last thing I was expecting on this episode of Derail Valley. I guess maybe most of it's on the track now. We can try to shove them out of the way. So I've got cars that need to go to D2 and D3. So I got D2I and D3S there. If I shove that junk vaguely at the D1, it should maybe clear. Anyways, glad we wasted all that fuel idling. Let's go knuckle into this junk and try and shove it out of the way, I suppose.
What's the air brakes on these doing? They're released, so we should just be able to bump into them and then just shove them. Can we watch the fuel gauge go? Is it like driving my GTO? Okay, well, it seems to be working. Not sure what's happening up here. Well, we're just... I mean, that's that's what I would do. That's, I would just shove. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> I'm worried that more physics things are going to happen. It may be the best if we clear that. Yeah, bye-bye. Okay, make it so that doesn't exist. That's great. We'll shove this mess into the hole. <laughs> okay, that's, um... Yeah, that's a whole thing. I guess we'll just kind of keep the power on a little bit, and... So we want to go, we want to run through... sea yard which is there we want to run through the c6 we want to dutch onto the c4 so we got to line that switch to run through the c6 and then we got to throw just this one switch and we'll throw that switch to do the dutch drop oh lordy but we are already shoving through this dump it stop it stop it stop it stop it brakes please brakes please Probably, you know, being low on fuel, I should probably stop putting it in notch eight against fully set independent brakes. Okay, bye now. Bye bye, friends. Are you screwing me for later? No, you're almost, you're just almost screwing me for later. Look at that. Turns out I can never run to the food factory ever again unless I could figure out what the hell to do with those cars. Come on. You can shove through these. Choo choo, what are you doing? Let's go, please. Okay. Okay, bye now. <laughs> Not sure what's going on there. The air won't release on. Oh, I'm not charging enough air through the, the reservoirs going back to the other diesels. So they're not releasing. I guess we could fire this one up. Seems like we'll have enough fuel. That'll probably help. This, this episode has become a comedy of errors. Okay. At least we'll at least have more power to blow through it now. Until this DE6 runs out of fuel and then we'll be hosed again, but then there'll probably be another DE6 that we can go grab somewhere else. I wonder if they have increased maintenance if you uh, if you run out of fuel. I wonder if that's a thing. Probably. I ought to drag all three of these over and service them manually for once because Lord knows they're probably going to be expensive to service. And we'll just slam the independent on because we're here and I don't want to deal with the train brakes recovering forever. Alright, so we're going to run through D6. We're going to Dutch drop the last cut of cars for the, or not the D6, the C6. We're going to Dutch drop the last six cars for the C4. And we're lined into the C6, right, right, left. And then C4 is also lined right, so we'll just have to throw that one switch. So that's a pretty good clip right there. Okay, so we gotta find what are our last six cars in this pile. Of course, they all look the same. So one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> and of course, those there, right? One, two, 
Three, four, five heists. Count, please. There's four behind. So this is the last car in that job, right? Last last car. So what we'll do, we'll undo these guys, do that. There's not a good way to do this. There we go. Pop the air, please. Crap, we're getting too far up. Oh, and it's too far away to use the remote. Turns out we're not Dutch dropping these. <laughs> Turns out I'm just gonna pop the hoses manually. And then we'll come get them later. Wherever they end up. And then we'll dump these from the back. As soon as we get on the track, pretty much. Bang, right there. And we climb up to the, the front of the mess here, which is probably this guy. We do that, and then we'll let the air recover. And then this is, where is this going? D2 inbound? Four through 11. Oh, did I have way more than that? Why is this confusing? It doesn't say the destinations. Whatever, let's try turning in those jobs and see what happens. Oh, the jobs have converted to shunting jobs. That's why it's so confusing already. Oh, poo. Okay. So that, oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> the brain sorted. Let's do this thing. And let's shut down this locomotive. This one needs to go night night. If we want to have some amount of fuel left at the end of this thing. Let the middle locomotive do the work. All right, so we're gonna shove back do these, then we'll go grab the, the forlorn cars on the other end of the, the railroad here. All right, so we got four through 11, and then 12 through 18, so the last six cars, which are presumably all these box cars, these six box cars are going on one track. They're going on the D3S, the other ones are going on the D2I. Where's my... There we go. Luckily, even though we're linked with the locomotive that is shut down, this still works. So... We shall use it. And it, there's a pretty steep grade out this other side, so I'm just going to kind of let it coast and see what it does. Yeah, 2.1. Got a lot of dead weight. Two diesels we're shoving around. Give it a little gas. Give it a lot of gas. Yeah, that grade ate this train. Yowza, okay. And pass the switch, don't care what it does now. Now we need to go line ourselves to the D yard again. That's the servicing shed. Okay, so we got the rear cut is for the three. Of course, there's crap on it, so we can't just kick it. Back into the three, move those two cars. And then grab the S. Okay. Oh, wow. That grade got things cooking. Let's ride the point of our own shove here. The three S screaming at the grade crossing. Ah! which is poorly occluded by these trees. It's not very safe. Whoever the authority of Food Factory Town is should be ashamed of themselves. Get a little set on the train, get things slowing down. We'll release it. We probably could have kicked these. Gotta learn to live a little, Heiss. They're just scrap hoppers. Bang into him hard as you want. You know what? You know what? We're just gonna do that. Bye bye now. Bye bye now. <laughs> What's the point of having buffers if you can't climb out onto them to do kicking maneuvers like that? Of course, we missed the, the switch to make it really worth it by like two things, but it's fine. 
Everyone's resetting. Those cars are going in the three. Not sure if they've banged into those scrap opera. Yes, they have. And they've sent them flying at the Explody Boys. Oh my god, and they don't have air on them. Um, 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 uh. <laughs> please don't. Please go in the dirt. This is why switches allowing cars to derail is a good thing. This is why this is oh, this is why these are bad. Oh god, and we're letting our train run. Don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up. Okay, let's go find my train. Where did it go? There it is. Okay, come back, please. What was that about kicking cars being fine? Jesus Christ. <laughs> if we make it through this episode without blowing something up, I will be properly impressed. We can always, well, you know, let's give ourselves the opportunity to screw up one last time, shall we, viewers? That's what the people want. Let's kick these. So we'll close that angle cock. Open that. Pop the air. Bye bye, diesels. And then we'll let you recover. And if we could run the diesels off the switch there. Get him in the clear, that'd be brilliant. That's got a minute to roll, so we'll get these guys past the switch. Kind of keep an eye on it over there. Kick the reverser into reverse. Line that. Just let the hill do whatever it's going to do to him. Come here. These guys are still rolling just fine. We'll just throttle those boys up a little bit so that they'll slow down. They're out of range. We'll let them do what they're going to do. This guy is on his destination. We'll get run over by him. Pop the air. Come to a stop before explosions happen. Thank goodness, and we we left this with a little bit of throttle going on in reverse. That's fine, it's still going uphill. How about you come the right way, please? Standing in the gauge, running his own remote control engine at him. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so now what we can do is we can line ourselves into C4 again. We'll run through C4. We'll go grab the cars we thought we were going to be able to Dutch drop. That so conveniently stopped right before the switch. Pull him through, set him down, time down. <laughs> Go service the locomotives, and we'll and we'll see how much money we made. Oh, it's like wait, we're not lined into the right thing, and then there's a whole switch there. They got a lot of passenger car opportunities over here, don't they? We're gonna highball through the yard here. We're gonna get some. We're gonna get something done today. We still have air, right? Some. <laughs> Fifty kilometers an hour's yard speed, right? All right. Coming in for knuckle here. Oh, but I left the... I didn't ready the... Oh, I didn't ready the diesels coupler. Alright. Got him. Put it in run 8. I'm sure these guys are probably dumped. Yeah. Still dumped. They got nice good seals in their, uh, their air brake there. Somebody's recently annualed all these cars. Despite them being rustier than sin and full of asphyxiating chemicals. It's fine. How's this one doing on fuel? Oh, it's doing good on wheel slip. It's also at bingo fuel. That's, well, you know, nothing quite like almost running three locomotives out of fuel to let's finish off the episode. Alright. As soon as we get confirmation that these cars are on, we'll, we'll just pop the knuckle here. And then pop the air. I wish this was easier. 
We'll grab, the, we'll grab the thing. We'll throttle the diesels up a bunch. And pull away violently. Wee! Bye! <laughs> Where's the station again? That one. We'll let the diesels just go roam free for a minute. Gonna come in this way. We'll turn in these last couple jobs. Go, uh, get the diesels serviced. They didn't run off too far, apparently. Then we'll, we'll figure out what the, the sum total of this is. Well, I guess what everyone's probably wondering before we go service is that was worth a good $220,000, that. Those couple jobs. Which is actually kind of less than I would have expected. I think that the real move is to just always run Explody Boys to City uh, Southwest. And then that's just the, the way to make money. Well, we got the locomotive serviced. Um, unfortunately, the crap that I ran into <laughs> that appeared uh, has incurred some damage in the lots of dollar range. It was all for naught. <laughs> and on that bombshell. Yeah, I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching this. Um, I guess I'm going to have to do yet another playthrough with something else as my setup to make that last bit of money before we can get passenger jobs because I'm going to have to pay off these fees. Uh, gotta love it. I think we're going to run some fast money, money moving stuff, whatever it is. Anyways, if you like the video, make sure you press the like button itself. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the little bell if you want to get notified when I'm posting stuff. Thanks for watching, everyone.